Okie doke. Today I am talking about loss of bone density with Tanya Streitek. Tanya, do you want to can't pronounce your surname? Sorry. <laughs> no, that's so funny because like for ages I did not want to have a website with Tanya Streisick because I've been picked on about my name forever. And so part of perimenopause and menopause is just accepting who the hell you are and embracing who you are. And you just tell people, my name is Tanya Streisick and I am, I'm a holistic nutritionist. I teach mindful eating. I am a behavioral health coach, but I'm also a dental hygienist. So this topic of osteoporosis is an excellent one because we have lived in and around the jawbone and around bacteria and all kinds of other inflammatory things. So it's very exciting to me. Ooh. So I will be led by you. Where should we start? Well, I, do you ever think of your bones as living things? Do you think of them as, you're a personal trainer. I'm I a personal trainer, so yes, question. I do. But I get the most, <laughs> I, I, I totally get, I think, I think the, 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 the basic opinion is that your bones are just kind of there. Yeah, they hold you up. They're kind of they're kind of the coat hanger that everything else hangs off, aren't they? Yes, yes, and we also describe ourselves as big boned or small boned, and um, you know, I think too. I thought when I was uh, twenty, twenty one, I was terrified of turning out like my mother, who had a wh horrible health history. But I thought, well, I'm just doomed. So I did everything I could. I did know back then that exercise built my bone bank. That not drinking, which when you're 21, you don't listen to that, but it doesn't help your bone bank. But I was all focused on getting enough dairy in for my bone bank. But I think a lot of us don't think that bones are living things and they do need care and you can deposit in your bone bank at any age. It's never too late. And so when we think of bones, bones form all the time. We have cells that make and break bone. And so when you think of myself right now, I'm in Invisalign braces. When you put on braces, you're taking a tooth and you are moving it through bone. And so right ahead of that tooth are little cells called osteoclasts, which break down bone, and behind it are osteoblasts, which build bone. And as we age, we can have a change in osteoclast activity. And so I can go through the risk factors of osteoporosis, but I found some interesting new, new ish, maybe new, new to me, new to you, um, little risk factors. And I just thought that was interesting because, you know, all of the cells that we have working in the body, we really are a symphony. It, everything is not in isolation. Everything works together. And so even though Sometimes in the hub, we talk about how perimenopause and menopause can, well, people feel like it quite frankly sucks. There's still lots of things we can do to maximize our body potential. This is like a beautiful time in life if we let it be. Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously some people are more predisposed to um, osteoporosis than others. Um, but obviously for all of us, it's something that we need to be mindful of because as our estrogen levels fall, so our bone density is prone to um, decreasing. Yes. So are there, are there lifestyle changes? Are there nutritional things? Are there, what, what advice would you give to somebody to give themselves the best chance of avoiding osteoporosis in the future? So when you say lifestyle, the top things are the, the alcohol and tobacco for various reasons. Tobacco itself can be toxic. Tobacco can carry mold and heavy metals. And these things can implicate our endocrine system, our organs. But to the alcohol also, um, we know that our liver has to break down alcohol. The liver has, I think over 600 little tasks to do every day. The liver has to convert your thyroid hormones. It has to deal with breakdown of estrogen. It has phase one and phase two of detox. And when I say detox, I'm not talking about juice cleanses. Like your body detoxes on a daily basis. It has to break this stuff down. So when we're putting those two factors in as far as lifestyle, we really are putting a burden on our liver. 
gender does have a role, you know, um, females because of the estrogen potential, but men do and are at risk for osteoporosis and yes age but that's also with that decline in hormonal shift so perimenopause if, if you're listening to this and you are in the throes of perimenopause this is your time like you can you can maximize the strength of what you have we also have history so if your parents had osteoporosis like mine did then you have an increased risk but if your parents like mine did had tons of stress, alcohol use, uh, tobacco use, and didn't eat because stature is also a factor in bone fracture and osteoporosis. I had a client, she was 64. She had advanced osteoporosis. She was diagnosed like in perimenopause because she had disordered eating and she still, she knew it but at 64, she was still wrapping her head around trying to eat more than half a sandwich at lunch. And so when we go on, and everybody's different, I'm not here to say one way or another of eating. As you know, Emily, we talk about this a lot. But when we start jumping on the fasting bandwagon or the keto bandwagon without really knowing our own body mechanisms and selves and history and all of that stuff, or even when we start jamming supplements in ourselves without knowing why and what works together, we can put ourselves at risk of not having a mineral balance in the body to feed the bones. And then osteoporosis can be secondary to other things, anorexia and bulimia, but kidney health, liver health, because vitamin D has to go through the liver and the kidney to get to the body. And even other things, hyperparathyroidism, if there's problems with your parathyroid gland, there's other things that can affect the bones. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a quick fix, is it? No, no. And like when we talk about gut health too, um, absorption, because as we age and with other things, we can bring down our hydrochloric acid. Stress will bring that down. We need that acid in the stomach, not only to fight toxins, but we need it to digest. And that comes from your nervous system too. So if we're not absorbing, then we're not getting those minerals in. COPD is actually a risk factor for osteoporosis, which I found interesting. And we can even have low vitamin D to do, due to variations on our receptors on our cells, genetically on our cells. Interesting. I'm going to sip my coffee quickly since Emily got me up at 6 a.m. <laughs> mm. So if um, that's a risk factor, by the way, coffee. Right. Do you know that you know that probably, right? It is. I, I don't drink coffee, so I've never worried about yeah. it. <laughs> Today I drink coffee. I don't drink it every day. Yes, go ahead and ask your question. So um, what little changes can people make to just sort of generally... I know obviously it's very personal and in an ideal world, all of us would have a personalized um, checkup and a personalized plan, but obviously we aren't all in a position to do that. So what sort of general things can people do to just maximize their, um, their bone health in perimenopause to then, you know, get the longevity later? Well, personal training, any training movement. And that's a biggie when, you know, it's interesting, you know, when we enter this perimenopausal menopausal phase, the perimenopause can come with such fatigue that we change the way we move. We lose our motivation to move. And it's so important because when you think of how our, and Emily is the expert on this, but Emily, you know, as our tendons attached to our bone, that movement on the bone is stimulating bone strength and maintaining the bone mass we have because we have we build that all in our younger years and now it's time to maintain so exercise is a big hairy deal it's really important we need to do that for our mental health too thinking about your diet what we were talking about before the coffee wine diet is not good so we do get into this cycle as women when you think of say your 40s your 50s we're still working if if we're blessed to be working, I have to realize where we are in the world, right? So there's that added layer of stress. And some research is showing that osteoporosis might actually be to 
inflammation that's changing the way these osteoclasts are breaking down bone. And so we have to think of all of these other things. But so yeah, the coffee wine diet, because we can be stressed and wired and tired. So we wake up with coffee and go to bed with wine. The liver as we age, and some of us in general doesn't process caffeine very, very well. And we're sucking out minerals with the caffeine. So if you're on caffeinated, phosphorated, phosphorylated like sodas, especially in the teens, if you have daughters or granddaughters who are drinking that, you're depleting your bone mass. So you want to back off from that. Eat your greens, rotate your greens and add in. If you're worried about all kinds of other things in your diet, just take an add in approach. What can you put in today that has variety and adding in all kinds of greens for calcium benefit? If you can do dairy, do dairy. If you like dairy, do dairy. You know, I'm a holistic nutritionist that almost does things backwards because I'm taught to teach you of the evils of GMOs and dairy. And that may have merit for you. I don't know you, you know, and that's where getting to know your body is so important, but also getting to know the person who can test you. We do need to get blood levels of our vitamin D. It's very, very important. And I know globally we have all different healthcare systems and there's times I've paid for the tests because I need to know it's so crucial and bone density scanning, get your scans done with your doctor. I don't know how that works in the UK. I think, I'm, and I'm, I'm open to being corrected on this, but I think in the UK, the bone density scans are only offered when you have a succession of breaks. See, it's globally, we have this like band-aid society. So if yeah. you're having a succession of breaks, we don't know what these levels are with those DEXA scans, those bone density scans. Yeah. And that sucks. And so honestly, if, you, if you're making any investment in yourself, shifting sort of the stimulants, the, the coffee, the alcohol, the tobacco, I have a quick guide if anybody needs it. You don't have to talk to me, it's for free. It's not an email list, just message me, you can have it. I used to do tobacco counseling. But shifting those little things and then get knowledge is power in this instance get tested if you can yeah and i will just say from from my personal trainer point of view um working on balance work as well as obviously moving Ooh. weight training and weight training doesn't need to involve big heavy things it's just it can be just your body um but also balance work it's so important because if you don't know, if you can't access a DEXA scan, whatever, blah, 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 fine. You don't necessarily know if you're going to be at risk of hurting yourself if you fall. Well, why don't we try and preempt that by making ourselves less likely to fall by working on balance? Literally stand on one leg while you brush your teeth. It is not a difficult thing to do. That's an excellent tip. And so you know it is so true because i think as as you know as we're younger we're we're almost brought up on cardiovascular exercise right get your cardio in and then we think of it with losing weight yeah. do the cardio but we forget about that connection with the core strength but even how our brain perceives our body in motion as far as balance functional exercise is probably too yeah so important Absolutely. And also with the vitamin D thing, I think, isn't it that um, beyond a certain um, latitude, pretty much everybody is deficient in vitamin D? There is that. Um, but again, I mean, there's, there's some recommendations that I've had for people. I mean, for myself, I've been on 25,000 IUs every week or two because of my vitamin D status. So, but, but yes, I mean, there is sort of like a safe level of what you can take with vitamin, as far as your vitamin D, but we also need to think of what works with vitamin D, which is our magnesium. Yes, our calcium, but our K, our vitamin K, that's very, very important. Um, boron is also a bone builder. Phosphorus, all of these minerals have a play together in getting 
everything to absorb. And even B vitamins, we need B vitamins to absorb magnesium. So if we are not, if we're afraid of grains and animal products, then where are you getting your bees from? And are you doing a good supplementation because we buy pills, but those don't absorb? Well, that's, that's the thing, you know, it's, we, we perceive seeing somebody and having like an hour review as a waste of money, but we will put $150 on Amazon and we don't know whether we're peeing stuff into the toilet. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as with everything basically that we talk about in these videos for the, for the hub, this comes down to putting ourselves first, you know, caring about our health, caring to, to not just put everybody else first, but actually to make sure that we put the right food into ourselves, so that we have a balanced diet. And by balanced, I mean colourful and fresh. I don't mean whatever processed stuff that any diet company wants you to think is healthy because they want you to lose weight. I genuinely mean fresh produce and colorful. Very true. And as best you can, because I think too, when we start to talk about health as wellness professionals and people on Instagram, I mean, I could very well hold up my $20 bag of spirulina, which does this and that for my body. It's got excellent minerals and B vitamins, but you know what? Maybe you can afford a bag of frozen kale and it's not organic and you put it in the smoothies and that's just fine. You know, like there's a spectrum, those like dandelion greens, parsley, kale, spinach, people get worried about, um, I get questions about all these smarty pants, you know, like, which is great. What about oxalates? I'm going to get calcifications in my body. Well, that's a whole other thing. Drink lots of water and, you know, have a little bit of dairy in it but calcium binds with oxalates like people get we get too rabbit hole so if we just go variety but also think that it's okay to get a bag of frozen veggies from the store too and also you know if you don't like these veggies you know kale is an acquired taste i will you know it's not for everyone but do you know what you can hide such a lot in a smoothie absolutely i mean absolutely I will give a heads up here. I'm not the biggest fan of um, kale or of avocado. I find avocado's texture is just quite weird. But smoothie, half a banana, load of berries, lovely. Now it tastes nice. Bung in all the greens. You know, that, that, that bit of broccoli that is never going to get used up and it's just sitting in the fridge. Bung it in. Bung some cucumber in. Bung whatever in. Blend it all up. Still tastes of banana and berries. Yeah. But, wow it's packing a punch. Very, very true. And you're also doing something for your gut in the sense that you're giving something pre-digested. So we like to eat all these raw foods, but we don't know if our gut can absorb it. And so when you at least blend it, you're giving something easily digestible and so much variety to your gut bacteria that, you know, hiding your stuff in there, it's a brilliant idea. I love that. I put parsley in my smoothies all the time. Yeah. But also I do want to just quickly say on the smoothies yeah. thing, this is about homemade smoothies. This isn't about the shop bought ones that are potentially laden with sugar or are potentially pasteurized or potentially don't have the goodness. And that's a bit of a, an awkward one. And I probably just opened a can of worms, but. No, no, you know what, There's we have here um, a Canadian smoothie company that has pulverized their smoothies and they're in these little triangles and they're very expensive. They're good, but they've got all kinds of superfoods in them. And so I, uh, there's levels, right? I guess I agree. There's some things that are marketed as smoothie, much like fruit in a chew, like that's not fruit. Yeah. But I guess too, it's the level. What can you afford? what's convenient for you, what gets it in you, and then learning how to read labels, what's in your food. Absolutely. Awesome. So our takeaway tips from this are, if you can get a scan, get a scan to understand where your bone health is at. Keep exercising. Get your balance right. And eat a rainbow of food. Yes. And if you think that you have digestive issues as far as bloating, pooping, constipation, there's so many reasons for that. The guts regulated by your nervous system. You could be stressed. 
Um, there's just so many reasons and there's so many experts in the hub that you can reach out to, to have even just a one little session to just get a few things clear in your head and get started. But I, you know, you froze a little bit there, Emily. So I'm kind of thinking you probably touched on the alcohol and the cigarettes. <laughs> probably. I think we've, we've, <laughs> yeah. Alcohol, cigarettes and coffee and, um, fizzy drinks, as you were saying, um, fizzy drinks, yeah. are all, yeah. But even to what you were saying about the smoothies, like taking care of that liver, supporting your body's own detox processes every day, water. So your kidney is flushing. That is so important. And it, we, we tend to not think of these small little things that we do. We want to go three weeks on something. I'm going to go off sugar for three weeks and then kablam, you're back onto your old lifestyle. Uh, you know, I mean, at least you tried something different for th three weeks. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect every day, but when you're sliding in these things that support your own body's detox processes, and we're all different, there's genetic modifications to that. You are supporting your bones because that's where that vitamin D gets converted. Brilliant. Thank you, Tanya. You're welcome. Thank you again, Emily. I love chatting with you.